Hi, I'm Randall from Randall's ESL Cyber Listening Lab, providing tips on language learning, culture, and human development. And it's really exciting to be with you today because I'm going to be talking a little bit about some of the all-time favorites on my listening website and some of the backstory behind the development of those listening activities. I think you'll find this very insightful, very interesting, and we're going to be listening to some of those activities as well. Uh, first of all, let me just give a brief summary of the episode today. I'm going to talk a little bit about the beginnings because I think there were multiple starts and stops to getting my website going. I'll talk about some about choosing the topics and the speakers related to it. And I want to focus on also what you can do as language teachers and learners to actually develop your own content. Again, I'm going to talk about some of the things that I've done, but you might say, I can do that too. And I'm sure you can do that as well. I'm briefly going to talk about editing and recording content, which is actually covered in a different episode. And then a whole different episode I'll cover in the future is about creating meaningful content that goes around all of those recordings. So over the years, one of the things that, and again, uh, people have often asked, how did I get my website started? One of the things I've covered in a couple of episodes on my website, this is episode 25, Behind the Curtain, where people ask me a lot of different questions about the development of my website. I encourage you today to ask any questions as I cover some of the relevant topics and points as we go through the broadcast, because I think this particular episode is very useful. Episode 25, again, found on my YouTube channel. Just really briefly, this started, the website started when I was working in Japan back in the 90s. I was thinking of ways in which I could extend learning. It's kind of like today, we're in the pandemic, we're going online, we're thinking of ways to extend our teaching, our learning, creating new content in many different ways. But this was well beyond, well, before Google, well, around the time that Google started, before Facebook and so forth. And the idea of putting audio and video online was just in its infancy. So what I would encourage is take a look at that episode, episode twenty. Five that deals with that topic of how I got things started. Certainly, it was not an easy thing. And from the episode last week, when I talked with Dave Sperling, he was one of the influencers, you could say, of my developing content on the internet. So throughout the broadcast, feel free to share comments about or questions about how I got started and so forth. I just uh, uh, looking at uh, Mariana from Hungary. Good morning, Paula. Uh, Paolo, I'm sorry, from Brazil. Welcome. Leila from Tunisia. We also, Hakim, I'm sure your students are enjoying your lessons, Randall. Uh, I hope so. Uh, also, Mona, hello, Randall, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for asking. And uh, also, uh, Alexander, uh, Alexander says, I learned how to speak and understand English by listening to your audios 10 years ago. So nice to see this guy speaking again. And again, you can look at my website and Alejandro and Mona and Hakima and Leila and Paola, Paolo, all of you and Elef. I'm going to actually be talking about some of the backstory in developing my website and how you can do the same in your own content creation, which I think is really important. And that's what I want to be covering today. Well, a lot of times when people think about developing websites, they often imagine, well, Randa, you must have a, a broadcast studio that looks like this with all the equipment and all of these soundboards and so forth. And the reality is I do not. I have some basic equipment. I have a microphone. I have a webcam. I have some lights and so forth. But again, some of the ideas that I'm going to be talking about today is dealing with the backstory behind some of my listening activities and how not only can you use them, but how you can create similar content here in the pandemic era or whether in your, you, you might be in face-to-face -face classroom or online. The other thing is, is that people often ask me about uh, the selection of audio equipment, microphones, webcams, pop screens, and so forth. I actually cre uh, created a broadcast, actually it was a presentation that I gave at an international conference on those selection. 
So I would suggest taking a look at my YouTube channel where you can find more information about the backstory of how to create what microphones, what recording software and so forth, I think that you'll find that useful. That's not what I'm covering today per se. Again, uh, from Tunisia, greetings from Israel. Uh, hello, uh, let me know where you're contacting from. Uh, greetings from Costa Rica, Tudor Joe. Hope, all is, uh, hope you all are doing well. Absolutely, I, I agree. Uh, oh, hi Randall, really enjoy your lessons. And Esther, hi Randall. Hi everyone from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Well, let's just get into the broadcast. And what I'd like to do is number one, I want to talk a little bit about the backstory of my website, how I went about selecting speakers and topics. I think that's important. And what I'd like to focus is not on me per se, but focusing on you in the way that you can do the same in your own content creation. So often people, let me just start by talking about topics. And today what we're going to do is listen to some of my activities for you to understand some of that backstory, because I think that'll be really interesting to listen. First of all, as I was selecting topics, uh, Ethiopia. Okay. Thank you for letting me know. Uh, one of the things that I did in selecting the topics is I was thinking of not only number one, making sure that I was selecting everyday topics that were not pre pre digested for the language learner. How many times have you opened up a book or you've listened to an audio tape and it says something like, hi, how are you today? Fine. Thank you. And again, very pre digested. Yes, there are times when students need that basic introduction, a very controlled, you could say semi-authentic content, but I was looking for something beyond that. I was looking for content that would actually allow me to engage with the language learner in a different way, making it sound more authentic, more natural. Uh, you could say uh, not like cardboard figurines were speak speaking. So that number one thing is I was thinking of everyday topics. And these are the topics that you're often thinking about in your own classings, classes, shopping, uh, greetings, uh, going to the store, uh, renting a car, travel, and so forth. That's what I was thinking about when I was creating this content. The other thing, I wanted the content to be engaging and interesting. And, you know, we could talk a whole lot about the psychology of humor uh, for hours because I think many people often comment, Randall, I'm really interested in your content because of the humor that goes behind that. But the whole psychology of humor is, I think fi people find amusement and pleasure, often laughter, in the surprising and often benign, you could say, misfortunes of others. In other words, one of my favorite groups, you could think comedy groups, goes back in the United States to the 1920s and for decades. The Three Stooges with Moe, Larry, and Curly, slapstick comedy. And one of the things that I was trying to achieve is humor, but not at the expense of the individuals that are participating in the conversation. I wanted to make them exciting and humorous, but I think that's what I was trying to achieve. And the other thing, I wanted to spotlight and highlight activities and topics that were relevant to everyday learners. For example, as I was thinking, and as I just mentioned about shopping, well, a lot of students and learners experience shopping experiences where they're going out into the community, trying to use the language. So it had to be relevant as well. Uh, Jaime, uh, good morning, Randall, from uh, Piura, uh, from uh, from uh, Peru. It's great to hear from you, Jaime. Again, Jaime and I participated in the conference re recently in Bolivia. And Carolina, my listenings are, your listings are my favorite thing to do to add to my classes. Well, let me talk a little bit about those. Again, I've just highlighted some of the things that I consider. Number one, making sure the conversations relate to everyday topics, making them fun and engaging and relevant to the audience. So with that in mind, often people ask me, well, how did you get started and who are the voices? Well, this actually started back in Japan when we were living there in the mid 1990s. Well, from the beginning of the 1990s, near the end. And as our family grew, you can see some pictures of our children. I was thinking 
how can I engage them in the listening activities? Because let me ask you, how often do you listen to a conversation from your textbook online that have children's voices? Almost never. Usually it's adult language learners. And I think one of the reasons is how can you control the grammar output of a, of a four-year-old, five-year-old child? How can you sit that child on your lap and say, oh no, you can't, you have to make sure that you use this verb correctly because it's not eat it, it's ate. You need the past irregular verb. You can't, but children's voices, you know, we live in a world with children. We live in a world with people of all ages. And so what I wanted to do is create those voices so I added my children's voices to the conversation, starting when they were really young. And they enjoyed that. And I wanted to kind of balance out adult voices with also children voices. And a little bit later, I'll talk about my wife and my brother who have also participated in that. Uh, Hakima asks, do you think non-native speakers of English can do it? Absolutely, Hakima. And this is one of the things that I wanna really highlight as well is that teachers should be, not only can, but should be creating listening content with voices of all accents from any country, because just like you, Hakima, or anyone out there, you have an accent and I have an accent. And it's important that students be exposed to all kinds of voices of all ages, of all nationalities. So Hakima, thank you for bringing that in. Olenka says, good morning. Greetings from Trujillo, Peru. I've been there. Thank you. Hakima says, you are really inspiring. So Hakima, as you're mentioning, as I'm talking about these ideas of the topics, uh, creating content, selecting engaging voices and so forth, those voices can absolutely be non-native speakers. That I think adds to the richness of our language, of our world, diversity. And so absolutely, I would encourage that. The next thing I want to talk a little bit about is the voices now. So as my children have grown older, you can see my, my children have grown older and have been involved throughout the years. I've been very grateful for their participation. And I asked with their permission if I could use their pictures because over the years as well, I've been somewhat private about including the voices, not the voices of my children, but who they are just to maintain their privacy. But I certainly want to highlight all of their voices, their participation, including my wife, as you can see there. And you can see a picture of Monument Valley, a very famous place on the Arizona-Utah border with my brother, Jeff, again, be participating in so many different ways over the years. Um, one of the things what I'd like to do right now is I'd like to highlight some of the top listening activities and the backstory behind them. And again, you see the first three, I'm not gonna show all of these, but these are some of the top highlights that I have. The first three dealing with children, the next one, running shoes, dealing with the concept of honesty. As I just mentioned, I'm always thinking about how I can be more pronounced and emphasize real day, real life topics, things that are relevant. Honey, are you listening? Again, talking about relationships in which men and women need to be very considerate and compassionate and listening carefully. Cyberbullying, uh, dealing with social issues and suicide prevention, mental health. So while people often think about my website as being focused on humor and everyday topics, I try to address many topics that are relevant to all kinds of situations. And so what I'd like to do now is I would like to, in highlighting some of these, I would like to show you and listen together some of the activities that I've developed over the years on my website, which I think will be of interest to you. I again, had to discuss today. All right, I just wanna read some actual comments that have come right in. Hi, uh, Ezra, uh, welcome from the United Arab Emirates. Uh, Mark says, pronunciation is hard to improve like a native speaker. You may share your ideas on this. And I think, yes, I think that can be a real issue with pronunciation, making sure that students understand in the, in the activities that you do as well. 
I think that would be uh, excellent for perhaps for a whole different broadcast as well. Nayeli says, I always tell my students, it's important to listen to people from different nationalities speaking English because that's the real English they will be exposed to. And I think that is a, a key point as well. Thank you very much, Nayeli, for bringing that up. All right. Um, let's see what other, it's important to another, how important to improve my accent. Why don't you think that it is to understand the person in front of you? Yes. I think understanding the person in front of you, I think is extremely key. Olenka says your website is really useful and authentic. Please let me know if you're still out there again, because, because of the disruption in the internet and the power, I lost you. Uh, yeah, yeah. We lo lost you just because of the internet went down. Um, welcome back. Thank you. I am back and uh, no worries. So thank you very much. Let us now get into what I would like to share with you is some of the listening activities that I've developed over the year. And what I'm going to do just directly from my website, I'm going to go down to this place that says Randall's favorites. So I'm just going to click on that. And these are some of the favorite websites that I've had over the year. You might have your own favorite listening activity. And that certainly is understandable because everyone is looking at language learning a little bit differently. Everyone has a particular need. And uh, that's what I want to certainly emphasize. So let's just go ahead and get into this. First of all, I'm going to show the activity Enjoying the Zoo. And with the listening, uh, enjoying the zoo, this was with my son. I think he was four years old at the time. And as I mentioned, I think it's really relevant, really important to include children's voices in the discussion uh, so that uh, language learners can actually process it. Now, as I mentioned also on my website, you can go over, you see information related to the content clicking on the listening script. And this is where we're going to actually listen together. And as I mentioned before, you can't prompt a four-year-old to follow a particular script. They're going to follow whatever you give them and prompts. And so I really like this one because as I'm trying to encourage and develop a relationship with my son, as we're talking about you know, his experiences, he also shares uh, his experiences as well. Let's listen to this one. Mikey, time for bed. Why? <laughs> Why? It's getting dark out. Well, do you want to talk before you go to bed? Yeah. Uh, what do you want to talk about? Um, the zoo. The zoo. Oh, that was so fun when we went to the zoo. What did you like best about the zoo? Um, the porcupines. They were big, weren't they? And what yeah. else? Yeah. What else do you remember? Um, the two giraffes. The giraffes. So as you're listening there, I'm not focusing on grammatical structure. I'm focusing on ideas. So when you create listening activities, they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to follow a specific pattern. Yes, we want to make sure that the activities that we're doing are modeling good language use and so forth. But there are cases where ideas are really paramount in anything we are trying to accomplish. The next one I really enjoy was with my daughter, Emily. This was when she was about five years old. And again, once again, talking about human connection, I really enjoy this because it really emphasizes some of the things that we like to do together. As students are watching, and let me just go back, with my I, uh, listening activities, I often put idioms that may or may not be used actually in the conversation. I think they're very relevant and very important. But let me go ahead and listen to this. Again, children's voices become so important. And Hakima, you are asking, well, what about non-native speakers, even non-native speaking children? Absolutely. I think those voices can be included as well. So let's listen to my daughter, Emily, when she was five years old. Dad, I'm bored today. I want to go to a movie. A movie today? Well, I don't know. Here, let me look at the newspaper. Okay. Uh, here's a movie that starts in the afternoon at 2.45. Well, should we take Mommy with us? Yeah. Okay. We have to wait for Mommy because she's at a meeting right now. Okay. All right. And what should we do after we see the movie? Go on a 
walk. Well, where would you like to go on a walk? Would you like to go down to the beach or through the park? To the beach. To the beach. Well, that sounds great. And then maybe we can go out to eat tonight. Does that sound okay? Yeah. I love that. To the beach. And one of the things that I think my children would say is over time and over the years, trying to find a balance in my own life. As I was creating websites and working and family, I think was something that I learned over time and I'm still learning to do that. A uh, couple of comments. Uh, oh, okay, great. You can hear me now. Isra says, I already use your listening activities. My students to improve their listening skills. And one of the things I'm going to show you another one. This one is dealing with first date. This is my daughter. We were She was pretending to be going on her first date. And what I want to emphasize is on my listening, as you do the listening activities, I always encourage people, do the pre-listening activities. So important because many times teachers just jump right into the activity. They run, they have their, you know, their, their students look at the questions and click on the audio button. But I find it more useful to do the pre-listening activities with the idioms. After you do the listening activities, then you can come down and do post-listening activities or online investigations. The reason why I like this particular one is because it's dealing with a relationship that I think as parents, sometimes we become drill sergeant parents or helicopter parents trying to control every aspect of our children's lives without allowing them some autonomy in some cases to be able to make choices. I really like this one because of the relationship in showing uh, a little bit of humor. And uh, let's take a look at this one. Again, this one is dealing with uh, first date with my daughter, Aubrey. He's here. Bye, Dad. Wait, wait, wait. Where are you going? Dad, I already told Mom. I'm going out tonight. Who with? You mean you're going on a date? Yeah. Mom met Dirk yesterday. Dirk? He's so cool. We're going on a double date with Cindy and Evan. Dirt. I have to go. Wait, wait. I want to meet this guy. <laughs> so, so I think it's really perhaps a, a, a really common feeling for parents to want to meet the people that their children are hanging out with and are doing things. And again, as we go out, uh, go along in this conversation, we learn more about the interaction at the very end of the conversation. Then the father relinquishes and he allows his daughter to go out. So again, I found find that as parents, as I was creating the listening activities, again, this is perhaps some of that backstory, or as I was thinking about my own children, the type of attitude that I wanted to have with them, sometimes often missteps in the past, trying to learn to do better is something that I've really tried to highlight. So uh, in these activities, dealing with, uh, uh, dealing with the ch activities with children, again, this is on the link on my website, called My Favorite Activities. And as you can see, I have a number of listening activities with children. The next part I wanna talk about is conversations that make me laugh, that really kind of have a, a humorous aspect to it. One of my favorites is called car repairs. And I think this type of conversation highlights some of the frustrations, the ambiguity of life, of life, sometimes getting ourselves into a pickle, a difficult situation, and how to respond to it. The reason why I like this particular conversation called car repairs is that my brother and I really try to interject throughout the conversation instead of having A, 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 A speak and then B, 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 A, 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 which really becomes a very scripted type of conversation. It doesn't sound natural at all. One of the things that I would encourage teachers to do is as you're creating content, create some spontaneity, allow the conversation to evolve because sometimes we create a transcript, a script, and then we don't allow the conversation to evolve, to take different directions. And I know that with my own children, sometimes I have a script, but it goes in different directions. And I think we need to be able to accommodate the evolution of language. So what I like to do is play this conversation 
to see, notice not only the humor in it, but notice how my brother and I try to go back and forth, interject constantly through the conversation. Yes, this is a, a more challenging conversation because of that, but it allows, I think, learners to say, hey, I can understand that. I can really uh, understand with what is going on. Uh, oh, Mona jumps in and says, maybe Odin, our grandson, can join you now in some of these listening conversations. Yes, our grandson is three years old. So I think he's about ready. So thank you for bringing that in. And Magali says, thanks for your website is awesome. So again, what I'd like to do is listen to this conversation together. This is a model of the type of listening activity. I think more for advanced learners, but the same type of interjecting. And instead of saying, you speak A, 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 and then you B, 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 I think we can make it more natural. Let's take a listen to this conversation with my brother, Jeff, on car repairs. What can we do for you today? Uh, hi. Yes, I'm having a problem with my car and it doesn't seem to run right. Hmm. I mean, every time I start it up, uh, the engine runs for a minute or so, sputters like it isn't getting enough gas and then dies. Hmm. Okay, let's open up the hood. Okay. Let's take a look. Okay, start her up. Now, I'm just going to stop right there. I think a lot of teachers, no matter whether you're creating your own content or listening to my website, consider certain salient spots or very clear spots in the conversation where you want to pause the conversation. So in this case, he says, well, let's open up the hood and take a look. The man tries to turn on the engine and then pausing it without looking at the conversation and then uh, looking at the transcript and asking your learners what, again, these are prediction skills based on what you've heard so far, what do you think could be the problem? So instead of playing it from beginning to end, consider breaking up the listening recording into several chunks to where they can listen to part and then you can ask questions based on it. Let's continue. Okay, okay, shut her off. Hmm, so let me look at the book here. Book? Yeah, sounds like a... Now, if you if you go to a mechanic and they have to look in a book and are not sure, what would you do in this case? So with my students, I might say, or language learners, again, you stopped it right after the mechanic was listening to the engine. The mechanic is now looking at a book. I might pause once again with the students and say, what would you do in this situation? So again, hypothesizing, prediction, predicting, uh, critical thinking skills, all can be used in short segments in a listening recording like this. So if I were to ask you, if the mechanic is looking at your car and, ha car and has to look at a book for information, what would you do? Let's listen a little bit more. Possible uh, fuel line, dirty carburetor, bad alternator, or even a weak battery. So which one is it? Uh, difficult to say. Hmm. Let me try this. <laughs> now, if the mechanic is hitting your engine block and pounding on it, looking at a, a book, what in the world would you do? So this becomes somewhat humorous because it's a very surprising situation. Uh, the driver, me in this particular case, who has brought his car to the mechanic is wondering, feels frustrated. You can already feel what is going to happen, that this is not going to look pretty at the end of this conversation. So the idea of predicting, of critical thinking, of, and so forth can be embedded into short segments of the audio. Let's continue. All right. You need to talk to the mechanic. The mechanic? So who are you? <laughs> well, I'm the assistant. I've only been here on the job for two days. So why didn't you tell me that in the first place? I mean, I wouldn't have wasted all this time. You didn't ask. Oh, okay. How much is it going to cost? Eh, difficult to say. Well, that's what are, you said about the last thing. Are you local or out of town? <laughs> so, so the mechanic is, well, the assistant mechanic is asking him, are you local or from out of town? Now, why would he want to ask that? Again, critical thinking. All right. And again, Olenka says, having fun is so important in, in such conversations. It sounds 
uh, real ones, right? Absolutely. So let's continue, find out and predict what is going to happen next in the conversation. Well, I'm just passing through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the only place for miles. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Man, can't you see my license plate? Sure did. Okay, <laughs> the out-of-town rate. Let's see. Okay, here we go. It's a fuel line. That would be 100. Fuel? No, no, that's a local rate. <laughs> oh. Here, 200 for the pre-screening check, 150 for parts, oh. plus or minus 100, oh. and $75 an hour for labor. Oh. Oh, oh, yeah, today is a holiday, so labor is actually $50 more per hour. Huh? Those prices are outrageous. And what holiday is today? Oh, it's the local pumpkin festival. Oh, come on. I can't believe this. Of all my luck, my car breaks down in this out-of-the-way town, That's and it'll right. cost me an arm and a leg to get my car fixed. Ah, we'll take care of you. Just bring that car back on Tuesday. T so Tuesday. my car mechanic, take a Tuesday. look at it. Why not today? It's only 11 a.m. Ah, we close 11.30 on holidays, and we're closed tomorrow and Sunday. Wow. And we're even close the following day as well. I can't wait that long. I need my car repair now. Well, next week is the best we can do, but you can talk to Mike at the Pumpkin Festival. Oh. oh. This time will grow on you. Oh, man. So it is an example of listening to the conversation, taking a singular conversation and breaking it up into pieces so that students not going from the beginning to the end, but breaking it up into segments so they can actually do all of these prediction skills. And these can be done at lower levels as well. It doesn't have to be just a higher level. Uh, Mona says, I often have my students predict the content of the reading and listening passage. It boosts their critical thinking skills. Absolutely. And that's one of the goals that I've tried to do over time. Well, those are some of the ones that are humorous. But what about, Randall, some of the other activities? And what I'd like to share with you, going back to the listening activities, this is where you find the listening favorites. And one of the things that I want to share with you as uh, as an example, I have section right here on conversations that make me think, cyberbullying, suicide prevention, pre uh, prevention, smoking and the impact it can have on health, texting and driving, a drug addiction. Honey, are you listening? That is an example. And let's get, take a look at that. Sometimes, you know, people are so unaware about the needs of their partners that they sometimes forget. And once again, let's listen to this. And again, you could look at the pre-listening skills. For example, it says, if you have a problem in your life with money, a girlfriend, your grades, who do you talk to first? Your mom, your dad, your brother, sister, and what are the reasons? So certainly, I want to keep those in mind as I'm doing. But let's take a look at this. Again, this is dealing with listening skills, not just listening, understanding you know, what people are saying, but understanding their hearts. Let's take a look at this. Again, a, a conversation between a man and a wife dealing with the problems that she is having. Let's listen. Hi. Hi, sweetie. I'm home. Um, I'm home. Oh, hi, honey. Welcome home. How was your day? Well, oh, that's good. It was terrible. The company's going to lay off about 50 people, and I might be one of them. Oh, that's nice. That's uh, nice? Oh, uh, You're not even listening. What? So, what did I tell you? Um, you said that the company, something about 60 employees, um, and you might... I mean, this guy is clueless. He is clueless and is not very sensitive to the needs of his partner, his wife. And one of the things that I include this in this particular conversation and topic is because I think all of us, including myself, often have difficulty in listening critically and listening carefully, not just for the meaning of the words, but the meaning behind it, because often people are struggling deeply just to be understood. People want to be heard and seen. And I think in this example with Honey, Are You Listening, really delves into the topic of listening deeply to other people. The last one I want to share with you today is on cyberbullying. Now, I simply, I do have other favorite conversations, things, things that are silly, some of my older conversations that are still great and enjoy. But the last one I want to share with you deals with cyberbullying. 
And one of the reasons why I have this particular topic, I think it's very relevant to our family when there have been times when our own children, children have been bullied. And when you think about in the past where bully, bullying just happened at school and so forth, now because of the internet, sometimes the heightened uh, need to be aware of this particular topic, I think is so critical. And the reason why I created this topic, as you will see, is that sometimes even teachers are deeply unaware of the struggles of their own students. And so let's listen to this example. It's between a teacher and a parent. Find out and listen carefully. And this is where I might use this pre-listening activity or the activity where I'm encouraging students with, to develop critical thinking skills to listen, what is the problem and what is the possible solution? So listen, listen to this one. Again, between a parent and a teacher. In this particular case, it is my wife and me. I am the teacher and my wife is the parent. Hi, welcome to Parent Teacher Conference. Thanks. So what is your child's name? It's Megan Jones. Megan, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, Megan. Um, she missed the last couple of days. Has she been sick? No, she's been having some problems with the other kids in your class. And well, you know, junior high school is a difficult time, but she just needs to speak up a little bit more in class. I think no, that. It's how insensitive imagine let's we're going to continue but again the teacher seems to be so clueless making simplistic assumptions about why bullying is happening let's continue it's, it's more than that some of the kids in your class have really been bullying her a lot what do you mean well um they've been teasing her a lot about her appearance and then the other day you didn't help things what yeah, she said you made a comment about her clothes. What do you mean? I mean... She said you commented on her shirt and jeans like they were from the 1970s or something like that. Well, I was just kind of joking a little bit with her. Well, yeah. Yeah, right. Just joking. And one of the things that I think we really, as teachers, as human beings, are so unaware of how unaware we are on the actual needs of our students or our family or whoever it might be. And that is what I was trying to emphasize on some of these listening activities. Yes, in the development of listening activities, I want to make sure that things are humorous, that are interesting. And that would be the same thing with teachers out there. As you're not only creating your content, be thinking about the important elements that go into careful listening activities. So I, again, once I began on my website, there is this page that deals with uh, the my Randall's favorites with children. Again, conversations that make me laugh, conversations that are of a serious nature, and some conversations that are just plain silly. What I want to do is let's take a look at a couple of other uh, comments. Hon Than says, you are such a humorous person. You are good at teaching language and cheering uh, others up as well. And that's one, thank you Hon Than for sharing that from the Philippines. That is one of the things that I think has evolved over time. We're in the beginning when I first created my website 20 years ago, I just wanted to make things that were humorous, that were just interesting and so forth. But I think over time I've learned a little bit more deeply of the actual needs of my children as they were growing up and the actual students that are in my classroom because they're struggling as well and teachers who are struggling as well. Um, here is uh, another comment. Uh, this is by Muhammad. He says, I'm not a native speaking uh, English speaker, but I have been learning English on my own. I'm not good for listening, reading, writing, but I have trouble in speaking because most problem is that there are no native speakers around me. I'm very interested in and have ambition. If I have uh, get another teacher to practice conversation with me, even 10 minutes a day. And so, yes, Mohammed, thank you for sharing that. And I think a lot of students are struggling to just find people with whom they can have conversations. Another, uh, Hefe, Hefe from, uh, from Brazil says, I will speak my mind here about Randall's ESL listening, uh, ESL exercise. They are really helpful. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm happy to hear that. And so as I was talking today, and again, feel free to share any final comments. 
one of the thoughts that I've really emphasized and what I want to emphasize even today is the idea that as you look at my website, these are the things that as teachers, you can do yourself. In other words, select speakers. Hakima mentioned, do they have to be non-native uh, speakers? And the answer is absolutely no. Anyone can do it. You can involve your own students in the listening process because in our world today, probably our students and people around the world are going to have more conversations with non-native speakers than native speakers. So I think that's important. Also for teachers, select listening activities that are highly engaging, that are interesting, that are relevant to the students, and try to select things or create activities that are humorous, that uh, that are interesting to the students, but also are what I call benign. In other words, they do not, uh, they do not portray in a, in a very negative way the actual participant in the conversation. Yes, I include a little bit of sarcasm, a little bit of humor, a little bit of slapstick comedy, you could say. But again, the ideas of creating something meaningful. And as I mentioned at the beginning, teachers, and I had episode 25 on my YouTube channel. You can actually watch that and find out what kind of audio I use, uh, audio recorders, microphones, and so forth to create your own content. Often teachers say, well, can I, is there still space for me to create my own listening content on the internet? And the answer is absolutely yes. You can create listening content for younger learners. That's something I haven't done. I've created listening activities with younger learner, not learners, but younger people, my children and so forth, younger voices. But a lot of the materials that I've created are not for, you know, really young learners. And that could be a whole niche, a whole nother category, subcategory of language learning materials that can be created out there. Uh, again, wow, loved it. I think critical thinking is a must in teaching English as a foreign language. Greetings from Mexico. Thank you very much. And again, one of the if you use my website or you use any other content out there, be thinking, how can I, instead of playing it from beginning to end, take chunks of um, of the material, again, planning out that I'm not going to play from the beginning to the end, but I'm going to stop after this comment, after this question. And on my website, as found in many language learning materials, you can, <clears throat> excuse me, you can find a pre-listening, post-listening activities that can be created as well. So for today, I hope this has been helpful. A little bit about the backstory, talking a little bit of uh, discussing and, and spotlighting some of the creation of my website starting 22 years ago, showing and, and, and involving my children from a young age over the last many years. And then the points that I included in the creating of my content, keeping in mind something that is engaging, that is relevant, that encourages language development with critical thinking skills, because these are the things that you can do. And you probably could look at your textbooks today, whatever you're learning, whatever you're using, whether it's my website or any other uh, website, and apply the same principles. So what I, um, um, what I want to encourage is that as you are, if you're a teacher, if as you create your own content, be thinking about some of these very salient points because I think they would be relevant to you. And again, as you look at content, you can be thinking about what I'm just going to adopt. I'm going to perhaps use Randall's website, uh, going to the website, encouraging students to use that. Uh, you can perhaps adapt materials that you're using in your language classroom. And the third point could be just create. Create your own content where you are with what you have. And that means if you have two or three teachers, again, you can be non-native speakers and create deeply meaningful content where you are with what you have. I think that's so important. And Elif says, so interesting. Thank you very much. I want to thank all of you for joining the broadcast, participating. I apologize for that interruption in the middle. Uh, thank you so much. And feel free to contact me through my website, uh, online, if you're interested in being a part, even. And uh, Angelica says, thank you very much for all the ideas you're sharing. Uh, and if you're a teacher and you would say, 
Randall, I have some ideas on developing listening and speaking. Feel free to contact me. I would be interested in having you on a particular broadcast. Thank you very much for joining. I hope that provides some background to my website and some of the listening materials. So I want to wish you a wonderful day and an even better tomorrow. Take care.